Um, so I know I said in my last stream that uh, that was going to be the last time I showed the uh, the spider crab. Um, I have realised though that I forgot to mention a very crucial um, piece of the puzzle um, in the last couple of streams, and uh, it really is. Uh, Kind of fundamental to how I managed to combine the two systems of animation. So the um, the baked in animation that was sort of part of the the, the, the model when I brought it in from Blender, um, combined with the um, the sort of uh, inverse kinematics driven system that uh, I've implemented for the claws here. So I've actually um, put together a very um, basic uh, demonstration to show. Uh, the principles, not not the very detailed explanation of um, of what the claws are doing themselves, but uh, just how you go about uh, overriding any form of um, of animation uh, using uh, using scripts uh, that you write in C sharp. So, um, what I'll do very quickly, I'll I'll demonstrate uh, what I mean by this, um, and then uh, briefly how I go about actually. Um, implementing a script to uh, to override this animation. So here's the here's the situation we've got. So this is the crab with no behavior. All I've got here literally is uh, just the idle animation. Um, he doesn't attack me or anything. I can walk uh, walk right past him and he's not going to not going to worry too much about where I where I am or what I'm doing. Um, he's just sat there doing his thing. Um, and the problem of course is that um, that I was having originally was that I couldn't drive the claws um, using the IK system when there was a an animation clip also playing. Uh, so what I've done here is I've uh, I've actually disabled all of the normal IK system stuff that I've been showing off uh, recently, and I've added a very simple script to one of the joints. Uh, so uh, you can see I've uh, disabled the inverse kinematics controller on the on both claws actually, uh, on both the arms rather. Um, so that's not that's not doing anything. And instead, what I've done is I've um, I'll, I'll uh, expand all of this so you can see. So the the arm has got various joints, um, and each one uh, has um, well, there's a bone in each in each uh, in each arm with a joint at each uh, at each joint here. Uh, and on this particular joint, I've added this very simple script that's called rotate. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like. It's very very straightforward, so it won't take too long to explain. Uh, this is uh, there's various flavors of, um, of rotation that you can do. Uh, uh, you can rotate about an axis um, or, or whatever you like. So what I've done here is I've created a just a, um, a serializable field called vector three and called that axis, and that is this uh, this value here. And what this allows you to do is to just select which axis. Uh, the rotation will happen on and I've selected the x-axis here. So that's the, the the red direction here So what you should see when this um, starts uh, going is that the rotation will happen um, Around the the red x-axis there uh, And I've just defined a rotation rate that uh, tells me how many degrees per second I should rotate the uh, the joint by and the very crucial part actually of this is I've got to save a reference or keep a reference to the rotation um, from the previous frame. Okay, so uh, this is very important. Usually you don't need this, this sort of thing. If, if you're just driving an object through rotation, you don't need to save the, the rotation, um, you know, if you're just rotating about an axis uh, in, in a normal script. Um, but uh, here it's actually absolutely crucial that we take a, an initial copy of the rotation uh, or a reference to that um, rotation uh, from the transform itself. This is the transform of the joint. Um, and uh, so that we, we will always keep a keep a reference to and then in late updates now this is also very important you've got to do this in late update not not the normal update we modify the rotation by applying the rotation rate to the axis so we take uh, uh, we um, multiply by this quaternion dot Euler so this turns um, uh, rotation in Euler axis angles into a quaternion rotation which is uh, what unity uses to define rotations uh, so we multiply the axis by the rotation rate and multiply by the time dot delta time to make sure that it's uh, frame rate independent and uh, so this uh, this method it just takes a vector three you can see the uh, the three um, Euler angles there x y and z so because the x uh, sorry the axis that I've defined here is just um, around the x axis it's one zero zero in the vector three notation um, it will only rotate around the x-axis here and then um, what we really have to do then is um, 
take uh, is reassign the rotation property um, back to our uh, to the current rotation after we've re transformed it. Okay. Uh, so the important thing is that we're not directly affecting the rotation until we've um, um, applied this uh, line here. Uh, so without further ado, I will just just uh, show you what that does. So this is exactly the same as before, except that now we are applying an additional rotation on that joint. And you can see that it's override, overriding any animation that's happening in the clip itself. And that's just going to keep rotating and he's going to become very distorted. Etc, etc. Right. So uh, that's really all there is to it. However, I want to just demonstrate something really quickly. Um, if I comment this out, what I can do, for example, the alternative is to do transform um, dot rotation times equals and then grab all this. Now you would think that that would normally be exactly the same as doing these two lines separately. Okay, um, just save that. However, this is this is the interesting bit, right? So now when I come back in here, let that recompile, play it again. Once it actually starts. Right, you can see it's struggling, so it's updating it in one frame, but then the animation that's driving the idle at the idling of the crab here is resetting it back to the way it was before so you can see it's not properly rotating that joint as it was before so that's the difference and um, that, that is why you need to keep a reference to the rotation um, update it after each frame and um, then reapply your rotations to that referenced rotation the um, other thing to uh, to note is that if i did this in update instead of late update you'll see something slightly odd it won't be quite as uh, dramatic as that let's just check to make sure that's saved yep it should still work to a point takes a while to compile with uh, with running the uh, streaming at the same time right okay in fact uh, in fact it doesn't work at all um, so again this is the difference between update and late update uh, causing this uh, this effect so although everything else should be exactly the same um, it doesn't work properly because the um, update function uh, you can't guarantee when that uh, that happens in relation to all the other updates. So what's happening is the animation um, uh, updates are also happening within the update loop, and therefore overwriting what's going on in this uh, this method here. So you have to have late update so that this happens after all of the animation updates that happen in the normal update loop. So the two crucial things to uh, to make sure that you do when you're trying to implement um, procedural animation is to always keep a reference to the thing you want to change with this could be the position or the rotation or the scale or anything else of part of the uh, the rig of your your character or whatever and then update it in late updates refreshing the uh, reference to that uh, that transform or the you know the rotation or the um, or the uh, position or whatever um, after you've applied the um, uh, so, so once you've once you've applied your uh, your updated rotation, only then apply it back to your transform, so that you always retain a completely independent reference to it to a rotation that you control and that isn't then overwritten by the animation that would uh, normally be running on on your model. Uh, so that's it. Um, that's the those are the two crucial things that you need to remember. Uh, and with that in mind, um, you can then um, do all of the other crazy stuff. Um, you can, uh, you know, make make the arms do what you like, or I could even add this to the legs to make them uh, walk in a different way. If I needed to update the um, the endpoints of the, the claws, for example, 
uh, or the you know the end, end of the feet, depending on the terrain. I could do that using this system. Um, so that's it really. Um, I'm going to leave it there for today. A uh, very quick uh, stream. Um, I'm going to be doing um, moving on to some new things in the next streams, hopefully. Uh, so no more spider crab. Uh, you'll be pleased to see. Um, and uh, I will catch you in the next stream. Um, I'll upload this to YouTube as well um, for those who uh, want to uh, follow along later. So thanks for watching and see you next time.